Hey everyone, it's Peter here. So, the Indian nations of North America are just like nations from all over the world. They have their very own governments, they have their very own languages, and cultures, and histories, and traditions, and in many cases, they have their very own flags. So I'm here to bring you my top 10 Native American flags. These include flags of individual nations, tribes, and alliances of tribes. So, you ready? Here we go. Number 10, the flag of the Santa Clara Pueblo Nation in New Mexico. Now, I know what you're thinking. There are words on it. That is usually bad, right? Yes, usually it is really bad, and usually it ruins a flag. But the rest of the design of this flag is so good that I had to include it. This flag was designed by one of the former governors of the Santa Clara Pueblo Nation, and I think the design elements are so unique and amazing that it's just lovely to look at. Uh, you can see these little step patterns, uh, like made of bright angles and stuff, uh, surrounding the flag. Those are in blue, and they kind of represent Pueblo architecture. Uh, you can see a lot of buildings that have these kind of step patterns if you go on the Pueblos. In the very center of the flag is a black Pueblo wedding vase, with those two spouts representing the man and the woman, and the bridge between those two spouts representing the union between the man and the woman. That bear paw that you can see on the wedding vase represents strength and health, and surrounding the wedding vase is this really interesting creature called a Vanyu, or water serpent. And water is always a big deal, of course, but especially here in New Mexico where there's not much of it, water is really a big deal. Number nine is the flag of the Eel Ground Mi'kmaq Nation in New Brunswick, and I love that central circular emblem. It just looks so crazy and it looks so awesome. And all the colors have meanings, of course. Uh, the red represents strength and power, the yellow represents the sun, green represents nature, and blue represents the sky and water. The circle shape represents the unity of the Mi'kmaq people, and the four directions of that circle represent four stages of life and the four seasons. And if you look closely at the geometric patterns inside this emblem, you you can see shapes that resemble both a wigwam, which is the traditional home of the Mi'kmaq people, as well as shapes that resemble modern houses. I think that's a really clever idea, and it, it all packed inside this really cool uh, looking emblem. Number eight is the flag of the Métis Nation, located in Canada and the United States. Now the Métis Nation is interesting because it was not one of the original Indian nations before Europeans showed up. Uh, it was formed out of the intermingling of both Europeans and Indians, largely in the Great Lakes area of the the continent, and today they have their very own culture that came out of that, and now they're located all over the place. And this Métis flag design goes all the way back to 1816, to the Battle of Seven Oaks in what is now known as Manitoba. And there are a bunch of different Métis communities all over North America, and most of them use this blue version of the flag, but there are also some that use a red background instead of a blue one. And this infinity symbol represents the idea that the Métis people will live forever, as well as uh, representing the intermingling of those two cultures coming together. And that infinity sign is also used by a lot of local Métis communities on their own flags. Number seven is the flag of the Chinook Nation in the Washington, Oregon area, and just the design of this salmon that is on the flag is so unique and interesting in that northwestern Indian uh, art style. It's just so cool. According to the Oregon Flag Registry, the human face represents the connection between the people and their, quote, historic source of sustenance. And sticking with a heraldry design tradition, uh, the salmon faces to the hoist of the flag, to the left, so that, like, if you're carrying it in a parade, uh, it will be facing, you know, forward. And number six is right in the same area as the Chinook Nation. It's the Clatsop Nehalem Confederated Tribes flag. You have the yellow, which represents the sun, in this really cool semicircle sort of thing. You have the blue, which represents water, and the red, that represents blood. And the image of canoers paddling a canoe together in black represents, you know, the Clatsop Nehalem people sticking together. And also, here's a cool picture from Facebook of the designer of the flag in the Navy showing it off. It's, it, I think it's a really neat, unique design. Good job! Number five is the flag of the Northern Cheyenne Nation in Montana. So what happened to the Southern Cheyenne, you ask? Well, the Cheyenne Nation got split up by the United States conquering its way west. Uh, the Southern Cheyenne ended up in Oklahoma, and the Northern Cheyenne ended up in Montana, where they are today. The Northern Cheyenne flag features a blue background with a white Morning Star symbol, which was the symbol of Chief Morning Star, or Chief Dull Knife, or Wohehiv, if I pronounce that right. I probably didn't, um, but that was the, that was his symbol. Uh, he led the Cheyenne people to their current location after their defeat by the United States, and this symbol was also used in a lot of Cheyenne ceremonies. Number four is the flag of the Arapaho Nation of the Wind River Reservation in Wyoming. Now, the Arapaho flag was originally adopted because they wanted a flag to honor their fallen soldiers from World War II and the Korean War, so they adopted this beautifully arranged design. The circle represents the world, and originally the design was supposed to 
to be vertical, uh, but these days it's very common to see it flown from a flagpole horizontally like most flags are. Number three is the flag of the Oglala Lakota Nation, which lives on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota, and it's one of my favorites. Uh, it's got this really simple design. It's like a star made out of teepees, which are the traditional dwellings of the Lakota. I love this flag. It's simple and unique and meaningful. The red background represents blood, and those eight teepees in a circle that form a star represent the eight districts of the Pine Ridge Reservation. And apparently there are some versions of the flag with nine teepees in their circle instead of eight. Uh, according to flagandbanner.com, those nine teepee versions are only used on the reservation. Interesting. Number two is the awesome flag of the Peguis First Nation in Manitoba, which uh, includes a lot of Cree people and Ojibwe people. And this flag is just so cool. Uh, the three colors in the background are yellow, green, and blue, which appear to be a, a reference to this saying about how long the treaty should last that established the Peguis Nation, this great covenant promise. So how long should it last? According to the saying, yellow, as long as the sun shines, green, as long as the grass grows, and blue, as long as the river flows. The main element of the flag is this really cool red circle of life. Not like a circle shape, but like a ring, like a set of points around a concentric central point, which I guess in geometry is technically a, uh, a circle. And my number one favorite Native American flag is the flag of the Iroquois Confederacy. And that's not a flag of an individual nation or a tribe, it's the flag of an alliance that has been around for over 400 years. Those five elements on the flag represent the five original nations that formed the original Iroquois Confederacy, also known as the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. Uh, those nations are the Mohawk, the Oneida, the Onondaga, the Cayuga, and the Seneca. And that central emblem in the middle is a tree, or a heart, representing the Onondaga Nation, which served as the capital of this confederacy. And this design comes from a symbol of the Iroquois called Hiawatha's Belt, which was made all the way in the 16th century out of wampum beads, which is where that sort of indigo blue-purple color comes from. It's really cool. So there you go, everyone, my top 10 favorite Native American flags. And thankfully, these 10 are pretty good, but most of them, most Indian nations in North America, I have really bad ones, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but one thing I can say is that even though most Indian nations' flags aren't very good, they look awesome still when they all get together and stick up for each other. That's pretty cool, no matter how they're designed. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hagone. That, that's Navajo. <laughs> Bye.